All right, welcome to part two of painting our character. So really quick, before I get back into the time lapse, I want to show you a few things. So you might have seen me do a few strange things in the last lecture, and I went ahead and I undid some of those because I wanted to explain them further. So the first one, let's talk about the shadow layer. So I, I created a shadow layer in here. Um, let's see, where is it? Right there. So you can see I can turn all these shadows off and I just use sort of a dark purple, well, actually it wasn't really a dark purple because when you're using a multiply layer, you wanna use kind of more of a lighter color. But I created a multiply layer. You can see that the layer type right there is multiply. And then I took my color and I shaded in there. Now you're gonna have to experiment with which color you wanna shade with, but once you do that, you'll see that it creates a nice shadow effect and you can create those cool shadows. Or if you wanted to, you could create warm shadows, it's up to you. So that's a really useful trick is doing most of your shadows on a multiply layer. And then I did a few highlights on a color dodge layer. So you can see right here, I have color dodge selected for that layer. And if I turn that off, you can see that it just kind of turns off some of the brighter parts of the highlight. And what it is, is I took some really bright orange and red and I went in there and on the highlights. So for example, on the cheeks, on the nose, on the collarbones, on the breast, Anywhere where there's a bright highlight, I went ahead and I added a little bit of highlight on top of that. So let me show you what I mean real quick. So if I come into my reds and I grab a really bright red like this, and then I use my brush, um, you'll see when I paint with that, it creates that color dodge effect. Um, you probably want to use a different brush for this. Something with a really soft edge, something like that. And you basically would just only want to color in where that highlight is. And you might even want to turn down your brush opacity a little bit. But it just kind of makes those things pop a little bit more and make them look like they're blown out, like the exposure is too high. Um, all right, let's go ahead and undo those. All right, perfect. Now the last thing I wanted to, ta wanted to talk to you about is facial banding. So facial banding is super important when you're doing people or character designs. And we haven't gone over this yet, but I'm going to show you what it is right now. So basically what you do is you're going to take an overlay layer and then you're going to paint in the face in certain areas with different colors. And the purpose of this is because these different areas represent different amounts of blood flow in the skin. So for example, let's start with a blue. So I'm going to grab a blue from somewhere in here, something like that. And on, make sure you're on your own layer with an overlay. I'm going to go ahead and just paint that in. I'm gonna bring my opacity up to 100. And basically this bottom area right here is all going to be in blue. Now I know this looks really funny right now, but when we turn down the opacity, you'll see how much realism it adds to that skin tone. All right, next let's go ahead and let's select a red. So I'm gonna come into my reds and this whole cheek area and nose area is all going to be painted red. I want to include the ear in that as well. Then let's go ahead and let's select yellow. And you can see that I'm just kind of keeping it in the same um, area. I'm not moving my color around in my color tray. All right, great. And then we're also gonna get a little bit of yellow down here on the lips, down here in the corners, like that. And I'm actually gonna turn, turn, change this back to normal, so now it looks really funny, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this normal version of the layer to go ahead and blend these together. So I can go ahead, oops, let's undo that. Let me find a brush that gives me opacity sensitivity, like that. And what I can do is I can go ahead and I can just start blending these colors together because we want a nice smooth gradient in between the two of them. Maybe I'll bring my brush size down a little bit more. Something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything. All 
All right, great. Then I'm gonna go ahead and select this red. I'm gonna paint some red down here on her chest. We're gonna get quite a bit of blood flow over in that area. And then I'll go ahead and I'll select the yellow. I'm gonna paint a little bit of yellow in here. Blend those together a little bit more. I'm gonna grab some blue and paint some blue here. All right, perfect. So I know right now this looks really silly and really over the top. Let's go ahead and change it back to an overlay. Um, actually, let's go ahead. I'm gonna change that back to normal because there's one more place where I wanna add some color in. I'll go ahead and select this red. And I wanna make sure, I can change this back to a multiply now because I wanna see what I'm doing. Oops, not multiply, overlay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint the lips in with this red. The red will, or the lips will tend to have a lot of blood flow in them. That's why they're kind of a pinkish color naturally. All right, and now what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and turn down our opacity. So as I turn that down, you can see it starts to look much more natural. So that's with it without any facial banding. And if we turn that up just a slight bit, it just adds that blood flow into the face and it makes them look so much more alive. Um, we could probably even turn that up just a little bit more, maybe to like 20. Now with the blue area at the bottom, sometimes it'll start to look <laughs> kind of almost like a five o'clock shadow. So sometimes what you have to do is you have to go in there with your eraser and bring your brush opacity down. I'm gonna bring it down to like 20% and I'm just gonna start erasing out some of the blue area. So I don't wanna get rid of it completely. I just wanna kind of lighten up that blue a little bit because it's it's looking pretty strong. Zoom out, see how that looks. I'm gonna keep going with that. It's still looking pretty blue. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm liking the way that looks. Maybe I'll turn that down just a little bit, down to like 13%. All right, so let's go ahead and turn that layer off so you can see without it and then with it, it just adds almost like some blush into the skin. It makes the lips look a little bit more red um, and it just looks more natural. That's naturally how the blood flows through the face and how it comes through the skin, even on a real person. So facial banding is a very useful tool for making your characters look much more alive. All right, so I just wanted to say one more thing before I get started on this painting, and I just wanted to point out how while I was doing this, you'll probably see that I made a lot of changes. You'll see that I would grab parts of the body, I would enlarge them, twist them. Um, this arm right here, I, I cut it out and I just rotated it and moved the position of it, and that's totally fine. You wanna do stuff like that. As you are painting your characters, you're gonna notice things that don't look right, or you're gonna have ideas that you think will look better. So I'm gonna continue to do stuff like that. I'm gonna continue to change things, um, maybe even change colors. I'm gonna probably add her hand down here now. I found some good reference for it. And that's another thing is make sure that you're looking at some reference. Reference is gonna be so useful for you when it comes to drawing characters. And actually real world reference of actual people and poses and hair and stuff like that, that's gonna be super useful for you. So make sure you're looking at reference. Now let's go ahead and let's jump back in and get started.
All right, this painting is basically finished now. <clears throat> so one last thing I want to do to it is I want to add kind of a glow to the background because just this plain white background is kind of boring looking. And the way we're going to do that is what we want to do is we want to go ahead, we can close this folder. So all of these layers are in one folder, not including my background. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that folder. So in Photoshop or on a Mac, it's going to be Command J or Control J probably if you're on a, on a Windows. So now I have a copy, open that up. And actually, maybe I can just right click. No, I'm going to have to select all of them. So I'm going to select all of these layers in this copied folder. I'm going to go ahead and merge those together. I can go ahead and pull that out of the folder. I don't really need that in a folder. So now I have all those merged. So if I turn off this group one folder or group two folder, which has all my layers in it, then now you'll see if I go ahead and I erase this layer, all of this is on one layer now. And that's exactly what we want. And it's important that you don't delete all of your layers because you might want to come back and change things. But in order to do what we want to do right now, we're going to have to merge all this together so that we can select the entire painting and shape. So now we're going to go ahead and select the shape of this. So command and then click on the layer image. Um, and your software might be different, um, but you're going to want to select this entire shape on that layer. So once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and invert the selection selection. So command shift I in Photoshop. And then I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to color pick this white. And then using my fill tool, I can go ahead and fill this in. And I'm going to fill it in on a new layer. So I'll go ahead and fill that in. Perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this white layer. So I'm going to have two of these white layers. So You'll see that if I just kind of grab and move this layer around, you'll see that it's basically a white um, outline of the girl and all the space on the outside of her is all filled in. And that's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and turn off the first layer and we'll come to the first white layer and I'm gonna come up to filter, blur, and then let's go ahead and select Gaussian blur. So the first one, let's make it a pretty light blur. So I'm gonna put it at about maybe about 12. So it just has a very light edged blur to it. And that kind of gives that glowing effect as if there's a big glowing white light behind her. Go ahead and hit okay. And then I'm gonna come up to the next one. I'm gonna turn that one on. And then I'm gonna go to file, or sorry, not file. I'm gonna come to filters and do the same thing. Come to Gaussian blur. And this one I wanna turn up a little bit. So maybe to about 30. And I'm going to go ahead and bring down the opacity on that. So I don't want that to be full opacity. Same with the other one. But you can see that kind of just adds a glow to our image. So it doesn't just have a boring white background. It has this sort of nice glow to it. All right, that brings us to the end of this lecture. So what I want you to do is once you draw your character or if you copy my same character, that's fine. Go ahead and post it to the Q&A section of the course so we can all see it. I love seeing students' artwork, so I would really appreciate it if you do that for me. And if you have any questions at all, make sure that you post them to the Q&A section as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.